Hey everybody, it's uh, Jason from PhotographyForParents.com. Uh, today I'm going to go over camera modes. Uh, we're going to discuss four primary uh, settings that you can use on your camera. Um, the four we're going to talk about is the auto feature, uh, aperture priority, shutter prior priority, and manual mode. Um, auto I really just want to mention because we want to try to avoid using auto. If you haven't already uh, read our our blog post on uh, the basics of camera and photography settings, uh, check it out because we discuss ISO, aperture, and shutter speed and how they relate to each other. Um, you want to have a good understanding of these so that you can take better photographs. Um, we want to try to avoid auto because it's going to set everything for you to try to give you the best exposure however you're not going to be able to control your depth of field um, you're not going to be able to control your speed it's just going to set it automatically for you so depending on your situation you may need to uh, use a faster shutter because you need to freeze uh, the motion of your daughter at cheerleading or your son playing baseball or kids running around at the birthday party uh, Anyway, you can't control that with auto. It's just going to set it for you to get the proper lighting, but it's not taking anything else into consideration. So you want to avoid that if you can. Um, if you look at your camera, you're going to see uh, the dial on top. It's going to have a, usually it's going to have a similar settings to one of these. Uh, I believe Canon uses this. Uh, AV and TV setting over here. Um, basically, AV is uh, aperture value and TV is time value. Uh, it's basically aperture priority and shutter priority. TV is shutter priority. And then the M is the manual mode. Uh, Nikon is usually going to list like these over here on the left. Uh, that's your aperture priority, shutter priority, and the manual mode. Okay, so I just googled a, a Nikon D3200 uh, manual just because I wanted to look up. Uh, I don't have a 3200. It's a it's a common entry level DSLR. Um, I just wanted to look up um, what the priority modes say in here and kind of go go through them. All right. uh, I skipped over all my scrolling, got to the section I needed. So. Uh, here in this manual, it lists uh, these four modes. It has a whole other section for uh, all these little pre-settings. Uh, all these little pictures over here represent a certain mode that the camera is supposed to set up uh, for like macro and sports. Um, we're going to ignore those because uh, you want to try not to use those. You want to try to use your uh, manual, aperture, or shutter priority. Um, it's going to give you the most control and the best images. So we're going to go over those real quick. Um, this first one here is the programmed auto. It's very similar to uh, auto, uh, but the camera has some pre-programmed settings so you can kind of tell it whether you want um, like a higher shutter and uh, smaller aperture or vice versa. And so it'll set similar to what you're asking it to do, but it still won't be... Uh, perfect control and it can be off from what you really want um, so we'll ignore that um, shutter priority basically says uh, the user uh, chooses the shutter speed and then the camera is going to select the aperture for you um, this is obviously when you want control of your shutter and the speed um, if you want to capture high moving action or if you want to slow down and purposely uh, blur and things like that. Um, uh, to be honest, uh, it's kind of up to user preference, but I don't use shutter priority very often. Uh, when there's stuff like sports or fast moving stuff, I actually use aperture priority, and um, I'll discuss that more in detail. But uh, I usually use shutter priority only when I want to purposely kind of slow the shutter, uh, when I want it faster. I actually usually use aperture priority, and there's some reasons for that. But you can use shutter priority for freezing motion and making sure you have a higher aperture, and that's perfectly fine. 
Uh, we'll go over these more in detail in some more different videos on how to use those. Um, but for now, I just want you to have an understanding of uh, what they do. Uh, aperture priority, um, you're going to set the aperture to whatever you want, and then the camera is going to uh, change the shutter speed based on the situation to make it work for you. Um, and then the manual, you're going to set both of those, and the uh, you're going to basically set everything, your shutter, your aperture, and your ISO to uh, give you a good exposure. Um, real quick, I'm going to jump over to a different page in the same, same manual. Um, if you look over here on the left, this is what your viewfinder looks like if you're looking into the camera viewfinder. And then along the bottom here uh, represents different settings of your camera uh, over to the right this is a zoomed in image um, the thing we're going to point out right now number four that's going to be your shutter speed so whatever your shutter speed is set at it's going to show up here in these numbers right here number five is going to be your your aperture um, so if you did set it your in shutter priority whatever you set your shutter to is going to be listed right here and then as you move the camera around uh, to different areas, depending on what the lighting's like, your aperture will fluctuate. Um, vice versa, if you're using aperture priority, whatever you set will show up here under number five, and then your shutter is going to fluctuate as you change your lighting and whatever you're shooting or pointing your camera at. Um, in manual mode, both these will be set to whatever you want, and then over here this light meter it's gonna tell you uh, if you're at zero it's gonna be a good exposed image if it starts giving you ticks to the right towards that plus sign it means you're gonna be a little bit overexposed and towards the minus sign you're gonna be underexposed and so you need to change your settings to adjust to get a better exposure unless you're purposely trying to under or overexpose an image and so that's the basic understanding of it um, that's what each of those things do and give you control over um, I'm gonna go into much more detail of like how to specifically use it and what to watch for when you're using these settings but you want to get familiar with these three settings and use them as much as you can and stay out of the auto or the pre-designated uh, little things they have for you on the cameras you're gonna get much better results so we went over uh, the three main camera uh, priority modes. Um, hope I give you a general understanding of what they do. Um, like I said, I'm going to go over more in detail of how to use them. Um, main thing is uh, try not to use auto. Get rid of that out of your out of your brain. We're going to try to be more custom, more manual, and uh, get better pictures of our kids which is our ultimate goal. Um, I'm just going to one more time just kind of touch on these. Um, the manual mode, you're going to set everything manual, but you're not going to use it in a whole lot of scenarios uh, with kids because they're moving and so active and you're kind of changing things on the go. It's just too much to uh, keep track of and change and adjust as they're moving around. Um, you can use it a lot of times for like uh, just kind of portrait uh, photos or staged photos you know when you're just trying to shoot in one specific spot but uh, like birthday parties sporting events uh, schools where you're uh, constantly kind of moving and changing your angle those little bit of movements uh, one side of the room might be lighter than the other one even the human eye doesn't you know notice it as much as a camera will because our eyes are so good at uh, taking in light and working with low light uh, you really start to appreciate that when you start doing photography but um, you'd be surprised like if you're at the soccer field facing one way because of where the sun is versus facing the other uh, your whole lighting scheme is going to kind of change by enough that you have to change um, your settings and on the fly like that when you're changing your angles it's hard to do in manual mode um, shutter priority like I kind of mentioned um, I don't use it that much it it can be used and it's a valuable tool and you, you need to understand it 
but really aperture priority is my favorite mode and that's my personal preference some people would choose uh, shutter priority but uh, I'm gonna my next video is gonna be all about how to shoot in aperture priority and I'll explain in detail why it's uh, so much easier to do on the fly and uh, why I think it's the best one to shoot in for the majority of, of scenarios but again there's no right or wrong as long as you understand it and you're able to get the results you want to get uh, you can do it in any of these three ways really um, but we want to stick with these three if we can so hope you found this helpful um, we'll see you in the next video uh, with aperture priority and uh, head on over to our, our blog for more info on how to shoot understanding ISO uh, understanding aperture and shutter settings in general and how they work together uh, you gotta know that and uh, share this if you liked it I hope you did have a good one